and welcome to Textile Update. This is Gwendolyn Hustvedt. One of the wonderful things about textiles is that we get to range from chemistry through agriculture into engineering. Obviously there's the art and design element, there's a huge historical element. It's just a wonderful way to uh, explore all kinds of really interesting topics that are, oh, forgive me, interwoven. Cellulose fibers are a really important part of our lifestyle as both as uh, uh, people who live in America, plenty of people who live around the world really enjoy cotton, and then it's an important part of our history, needless to say. So, uh, and, and cotton isn't the only cellulose fiber. There's linen. Uh, linen is sold. Um, we found examples of mummified linen. Uh, I saw some in the British Museum when I was there recently. Uh, of course, it's perfectly preserved because they totally coated it in like resin or something else. I mean, you know, hello, mummification, right? They, they're trying to preserve the mummy. They're not going to let the mummy's outfit rot either, but uh, it helps us understand how human beings have been using linen uh, or other fibers from plant sources for a very long time. Cellulose is a polymer that is made up from glucose molecules, which is so wild to think about, right? Glucose, right? Sugar, right? Uh, but when we take the molecule glucose, which if we touched to our tongue, we'd be like, mm, right? We take the molecule glucose, it's, I'm making a circle with my hands because it's like a ring, uh, there's a carbon ring in there, and we string them together in a long chain, then that polymer actually has different properties than just one of the molecules of glucose. Of course, the wonderful properties in the fibers themselves aren't just created by the polymer, although we definitely need to learn and think about the properties of the polymer itself. Many of the properties are created by the plant, right, the DNA of the plant that was thinking through how to actually lay down those polymers. Right, so one, many of the wonderful properties of cotton or linen come in the way in which the enzymes that built those fibers arrange the polymers. And this is part of the reason why fibers that are made from cellulose that were not made by nature, fibers like rayon, rayon from whatever source, rayon from bamboo, rayon from spruce, rayon from pine, rayon from tea leaves, doesn't matter, it's still all rayon, uh, and it has very different properties because there was no guiding enzymes laying down those polymers. We just threw it in a chemical soup and it turned out how it turned out. And so for that reason, we're missing much of the strength and the, um, you know, in the case of linen, the, uh, you know, the long lasting durability, uh, the uh, easy washability, the, the stability. We're, we're lacking those things when we don't have that guiding hand that was in there um, laying down the, the polymers. I mean, when we get to in-depth conversation about cotton, you can read this in your textbook or um, in one of the online materials if you're a student in the course, we can see that the way in which nature designed the cotton uh, fiber uh, building up those polymers in the rings is just uh, really clever, ingenious, and actually helped engineers design other things later. Uh, so cellulose is a very, very important source of polymers for fibers. Nature uses cellulose to build all kinds of things, not just fibers. It builds trees, right? Uh, it builds lots of things we enjoy eating, uh, <laughs> right? But uh, in, in the case of the fibers that come from seeds, such as cotton or milkweed or coir, which comes from coconut, Fibers that come from the stems, uh, such as uh, flax uh, or hemp, which can both be made into linen, uh, or fibers that come from the leaves, like the banana leaf or the pineapple leaf. Uh, those fibers, nature uh, has designed them for a purpose, and then we have figured out how to use them for our own designs. Nope, still don't know what to say when I'm at the end, except to say I don't know what to say. Oh boy, I can't wait until I get some feedback from you guys to tell me what I should say at the end of the video. Goodbye. Ah, so long, farewell, Avidas, and good night. Oh, okay.